Let us for a few moments meditate on the divine lord and pray for peace and happiness of the whole humanity. Om Stapakay ca dharmasya sarva dharma swarupine Stapakay ca dharmasya Sarva Dharma Swarupine Avatar Varishtaya Rama Krishna Yati Nama Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotegamaya Pratyorama Mritangamaya Om Shanti 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 Let us offer our salutations to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions the Supreme God Incarnate. Let us pray to Him to lead us from the unreal to the real, to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, to lead us from death to immortality. We have been studying Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. I am dealing with the topic Sri Ramakrishna's profound wisdom. All through the pages in the Gospel we find how Sri Ramakrishna's teachings are full of wisdom, simple, effective and practical. So we need to know, know correctly and then follow it up sincerely, then you get what you want. That means there is an element of effort on your part. You may know the things correctly, you may know how to apply them also, but if you don't act upon, then you remain as you were before. So that means one has to struggle oneself in order to achieve spiritual attainments. There is a famous Sanskrit verse which says, Purva Janma Kritam Karma Daiva Mitya Vidhiyate Tasmat Purusha Karena Yatnam Kuriya Datantritaha. The meaning is what we call Daivam or destiny is nothing but the karma done in the previous birth. Whatever the action a person has done in his previous life takes the form of destiny. So, one should exert unvariedly, bringing into play manly effort. So that means destiny is really person's own creation. The result of person's actions in past lives is called destiny. So, men can and do create the destiny. Therefore, wisdom lies in placing all faith in human endeavor and working on tirelessly. Good work will unfailingly bring good results. One need not wail over idiosyncrasies of an erratic fate. 
Swami Vivekananda says in the Song of Sanyasin, a famous uh, poem composed by Swamiji, he says there, Thine only is a hand that holds the rope that drags thee on. Then cease lament, let go thy hold. Sri Ramakrishna, he said to a person who came to him, he looked at him and said, Why? Why are you wasting your time with frivolous jokes about insignificant worldly things? Direct your mind to God. Everything depends on your effort. Your mind is your own. Give up this trifling buffoonery and go forward toward God. You can go further and further along that way. The Brahmacharin asked the woodcutter to go forward. At first the woodcutter found a sandalwood forest. Next a silver mine, then a gold mine and then gems and diamonds. So everything is obtained through one's own actions. Sri Ramakrishna says very clearly, effort is necessary for realization. Love of God and realization of Him can't be had if one doesn't work for it. Adapt adequate means for the end you seek to attain. You cannot get butter by crying yourself hoarse, saying there is butter in the milk. If you wish to get butter, turn the milk into curd and churn it well and then you will have butter. So, if you long to see God, take to spiritual practices. What's the good of merely crying, O God, O God? We have seen many people using the name of God very loosely, without any importance, attention given to the name. But they go by their own actions. If anything bad happens, then they see God, why this bad thing has happened. Well, anything that happens in this world is because of our own actions, then good or bad. Individual persons commit certain things, good and bad, and reap the result accordingly. In the same way, nations also commit good and bad policies. And so the effect of it will be seen in the nation also. Nations become prosperous at one time and get destroyed at another time. So, all these changes are continuously happening in the world. Nobody can stop it as long as the creation lasts. The clash between <coughs> good and evil goes on. As I said, it all depends upon the individuals on the one hand and all the nations of the world on the other. But the point is, how much attention is given to the cultivation of good things, how to make good forces very strong to counteract the evil ones. That's very important. So individual effort is necessary and also the states and nations also should gear up towards rising the good forces. All the attention must be focused on how to uplift the human personality. Unfortunately, we are not giving much attention towards that end. So we see so many bad things happening in the world all over. <coughs> Violence, crime, hatred going on. 
without any limit. We are passing through more and more dangerous situations and suffering more and more consequently. Swami Vivekananda points out what fate is. Man in general lay all the blame of life on their fellow beings or failing that on God or they conjure up a ghost and say it is fate. Where is fate? And who is fate? Swamiji says further, we reap what we sow. We are the makers of our own fate. None else has to blame. None has the praise. We make our own destiny. One famous person, Tryon Edwards, makes a statement, Thoughts lead on to purposes. Purposes go forth in action. Actions form habits. Habits decide character and character fixes our destiny. So, it is very important that we should take on to spiritual ideas more effectively and put them in practice sincerely. That we have to do, that's the only way of getting over the suffering, that's the only way we can contribute our best for the peace and harmony among the people, in the society and the nations. So let us all struggle towards that end. Sri Ramakrishna says, you have to engage yourself in spiritual practices. It comes to that point. So we are not doing any practice. We have become so much externalized. We have totally forgotten our spiritual dimension. And so all the negative forces are occupying our mind. So we feel tremendous uh, force of evil operating in the whole world. Coming to another wisdom propounded by Sri Ramakrishna about the reality. You know, people keep on debating upon various types of gods and goddesses and they debate upon God whether he has form or whether he has no form. The constant agitation is going on among the people following different faiths regarding whose ideology is correct and each one is trying to impose one's own ideas upon the other. The result is continuous clash. That's not the way. That's not the way at all. And here Sri Ramakrishna shows the way. Well, you don't have to debate on any of the spiritual ideas. Whatever ideas you are following, try to practice it yourself. Don't try to impose it upon anybody else and don't claim any superiority about your own ideas. Just keep practicing what you believe. That's all. After the result is obtained, then you will understand the reality and the glory of it. And Sri Ramakrishna has practiced all the religions and concluded there is only one God called by various names to be reached by any path. All paths are equally valid, equally sacred, equally great. So here Sri Ramakrishna is the integrating force. We are having a lot of interfaith programs all over the world going on in one way or other. 
I would suggest they should have Sri Ramakrishna as the ideal integrating force. They should have some ideal in front of them to practice it. If they really read Sri Ramakrishna's life and teachings, without doubt they surely come together. Because Sri Ramakrishna's life is full of uh, achievements and his life was based on sincerity and simplicity and purity. So there is no uh, double dealing and his whole life was full of love and compassion. So if really people take to studies of Sri Ramakrishna and his philosophy, I am sure much of the problems we are facing today can be solved, can be really solved. Well, God only should help to open our heart properly and understand the things. Sri Ramakrishna tells in the Gospel, nothing exists except the One. That One is the Supreme Brahman. What Brahman is cannot be described. Even he who knows it cannot talk about it. Sri Ramakrishna himself tried to describe what Brahman is, but he couldn't, because when he tried to describe, the mind got merged into the Absolute and he would go into Samadhi. So, the Absolute Reality can't be described, it is only to be experienced. Like the Akasha, Brahman is without any modification. Brahman itself is beyond the three gunas. It is beyond words. You know the whole creation, how it is acting on? It is acting on the three gunas. Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. These three Trigunatmika Maya we call it as in the Vedanta. So this is responsible for all the activities, good and bad, going on in this creation. That which remains after everything is eliminated by the Vedantic process of not this, not this, and which is of the nature of bliss, is Brahman. God alone is substance, all else illusory. God alone is real, and all else has only a two days existence. There is a famous, again, Sanskrit verse highlighting this truth. Shlokar dhena pravakshyami yaduktam grantha koti vihi Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya Jeevo Brahmaiva Naparaha. The meaning of this Sanskrit verse is that by just half a verse do I expound what has been stated by millions of books. Brahman is truth, the world is an illusion, the soul is Brahman indeed and no other than Brahman. Swami Vivekananda in his teachings also highlights this point. He says in his teachings, Brahman is one but he is at the same time appearing to us as many on the relative plane. Name and form are at the root of this relativity. One sees variety such as wife, children, body, mind, only in the world created by the science by means of name and form. As soon as this the science is removed, the realization of Brahman, which 
external eternally exists is a result the alpha and omega of vedanta philosophy is to give up the world give meaning giving up the unreal and taking the real brahman has no attributes but is existence knowledge and bliss absolute so that is vedanta that's why we always feel very happy to dwell upon these vedantic ideas the more you dwell upon this the more you feel happy and peaceful it is in vedanta all the religious faiths and doctrines get merged they all get merged the variety becomes one unity in diversity all the diverse manifestations of god they all converge into one point which is absolute reality that is brahman which we call in the vedanta so how profound shri ramakrishna teachings and his way of giving guidance to the spiritual aspirants that's why shri ramakrishna sent swami vivekananda into the west with this special mission of advocating the message of the upanishads the knowledge of atman the reality absolute reality the unified consciousness the sum total of all souls the cosmic soul the sum total of all souls and each soul is pure and perfect all the imperfections are because of association with the mind body and the things of the world if you go directly to your own self the soul it is pure and perfect so the spiritual practice really means going towards purity realizing your own true perfect nature the more you realize your inner purity the more peaceful you become going to next wisdom first i will quote a sanskrit statement how the great sages have expressed magnificent spiritual ideas in the form of verses which are extremely useful and beneficial for all spiritual aspirants it says mahata punya punyena krite ayam kayanam stvaya paran dukko tade argantum tareya vannavidyate the meaning of this verse is that the boat of this body has been chartered by you at a very heavy price namely all your meritorious acts that's how you get the human body it is not simply you got it on account of tremendous merit you got this human body this human body is given why what for in order to cross over to the other bank of the ocean of sorrow and grief pass on and cross while the boat does not break yet before you get out of the body before the body drops dead think of the divine practice spiritual disciplines and get the realization of the reality Shri Ramakrishna tells in the gospel 
one does not care for the cage when the bird has flown away from it and and when the bird of life flies away no one cares for the body left behind in this body is worthless and transitory if this body is worthless and transitory why do pious and devout men take care of it no one takes care of an empty box but all protect with care a chest full of precious jewels gold and costly articles so the pious soul cannot help taking care of the body because god dwells in it all our bodies form the treasure house of the deity in fact it is well known that each body is considered a temple sacred and god dwells in the temple so vivekananda says in his teachings there is but one temple the body it is the only temple that ever existed in this body he resides the lord of souls and the king of kings shankaracharya affirms that for all beings a human birth is difficult to obtain and that is a rare privilege and certainly it is a result of the lord's grace then the shankaracharya adds that a person who after having by some means obtained a human birth is unwise enough not to exert for self liberation really commits suicide as it were shankara calls such a person a mudhatma a person packed with folly so how precious this human body but how are we using it in all sorts of reckless and useless activities the whole body mind is being wasted wasted terribly it's a colossal waste whole life is wasted well what can be done if there is no wisdom coming to another wisdom shankaracharya says atma gyanamaya पुण्यो देहो मांसमयो शुचि तयोरैक्यम प्रपश्यन्ति किम ज्ञानमत परम द सेल्फ इज ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ नॉलेज एंड प्योर एंड होली द बॉडी इज मेड ऑफ फ्लैश एंड इज अनक्लीन एंड इम्प्योर एंड येट पीपल परसीव एन आइडेंटिटी बिटवीन द टू इज देयर एनी अनविजडम what's then this shri ramakrishna says it is almost impossible in this modern age to get rid of the illusion that self is one with the body which clings to us now the conclusion which the gyani must come to is i am not the body I am one with the universal soul the absolute and unconditioned being first of all the thorn of body consciousness has to be burnt into ashes by the fire of knowledge some vivekananda in his teachings says the same idea in a little different way he says when i think of myself as a body i am only a body it is meaningless to say i am something else and when i think of myself as a soul the body vanishes and the perception of the body does not remain none can get the perception of the self 
without his perception perception of the body having vanished we come under the delusion that we really have a dual perception of the soul and the body but such a perception never really exists the perception is either the body or of the soul it requires no arguments to prove it you can verify it in your own minds so there is a famous uh, vedantic treatise composed by acharya shankar it's called atma bodha self knowledge very fine book it deals with the nature of the atman and all the details are given there and how one should practice spirituality dwelling on those ideas page 729 shri ramakrishna said he can bear his teeth at school but shyness overpowers him when he is asked to sing he is referring to master mahashay master mahashay feeling greatly distressed remained speechless suresh mitra a beloved household disciple of the master was seated at a distance the master cast an affectionate glance at him and said to him pointing to girish you talk of having lived a wild life but here is one you could not surpass suresh with a smile said yes sir he is my elder brother in that respect all love girish said to the master well sir i didn't have any education during my boyhood but still people say i am a learned man master said my maacharan has studied many scriptures a big man to yam he asked isn't that so yam answered yes sir girish what book learning i have seen enough of it i can't fool me Uh, it can't fool me any more master with a smile do you know my attitude books scriptures and things like that only point out the way to reach god after finding the way what more need is there for books and scriptures then comes the time for action a man received a letter from home informing him that certain presents were to be sent to his relatives the name of the articles were given in the letter as he was about to go shopping for them he found that the letter was missing he became anxious and then he searched for it several others joining in the search for a long time they continued to search when at last the letter was discovered his joy knew no bounds with great eagerness he opened the letter and read it it said that he was to buy five shares of sweets a piece of cloth and a few other things then he did not need the letter any more for it had served its purpose putting it aside he went out to buy the things how long is such a letter necessary as long as its contents are not known when the contents are known one proceeds to carry out the directions in the scriptures you will find the way to realize god but after getting all the information about the path you must begin to work only then can you attain your goal what will it avail a man to have mere scholarship a pandit may have studied many scriptures he may recite many sacred texts but if he is still attached to the world and if inwardly he loves lust and gold then he has not assimilated the contents of the scriptures for such a man the study of scriptures is futile the almanac forecasts the rainfall for the year you may squeeze the book but you won't get a drop of water not even a single drop laughed 
Giris said smilingly, "What did you say, sir, about squeezing the almanac? Won't a single drop of water come out of it?" All laughed. Masters answered with a smile, "The pundits talk big, but where is their mind fixed on lust and gold, on creature comforts and money? The vulture soars very high in the sky." but its eyes are fixed on the charnel pit it is continually looking for charnel pits carcasses and dead bodies I shall stop here <laughs> that means you have assimilated what all i have said that's good assimilation is important then only practice becomes easy assimilating the ideas organizing them in a proper way so Sri Ramakrishna is always stressing upon practicality. Do your practices earnestly, take the spiritual ideas properly, and make efforts. So you are the maker of your own future. So all the things happening to you are having direct bearing upon your own actions done previously, good or bad. so the whole creation is just vibrating by the cause and effect of the activities so one has to be careful about doing what he is doing in the same way the nations also that so we are seeing so many things happening in this world they all are happening because of something happened in the past anyway suffering is there you know to overcome the suffering there is no option but come to spiritual life that's all we shall stop here chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously within o name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of thyself O self, drown deep in the waves of His bliss, tasting His nectar at every step, bathing in His name that bath for weary souls. Various are Thy names, O Lord. In each and every name Thy power resides. No times are sad, no rites are needful for chanting of Thy name. So vast is Thy mercy, how huge then is Thy tenderness! Who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to Thy name? O oh, my mind. Be humbler than a blade of grass. Be patient and forbearing like a tree. Take no honor to thyself. Give honor to all. Chant and sing singly the name of the Lord. O Lord and Soul of the Universe, mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue. The playthings of lust or the toys of fame. As many times as I may be reborn, grant me, O Lord, a steadfast love for thee. A drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant, O sweet one. In thy mercy, consider him as dust beneath thy feet. How have I longed for the day when an instant's separation from the old Lord will be as a thousand years when my heart burns away with its desire and the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion. neither imploring the embrace of thine arms nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence though it tears my soul asunder o thou who stillest the hearts of thy devotees do with me what thou wilt for thou art my heart's beloved thou and thou alone o lord lead us from the unreal to the real <coughs> lead us from darkness to light and lead us from death to immortality may all be free from dangers may all realize what is good May all be actuated by noble thoughts. May all rejoice everywhere. May all be happy. May all be free from desires. May all realize what is good. May none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous. May the virtuous attain tranquility. May the tranquil be free from bonds. May the freed make others free. May good betide all people. May the sovereign righteously rule the earth. May all beings ever attain what is good. May the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour rain in time. May the earth be blessed with crops. 
May all countries be freed from calamity. May holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred books be satisfied. For he being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied.